math time. Let us talk about properties of a parallelogram. Okay, property number one, it says that in a parallelogram, any two opposite sides are congruent. Just like in our illustration here, we have segment or side CM is opposite to side AL. And side CA is opposite to side ML. Thus, segment MACM is congruent to segment AL. While segment CA is congruent to segment ML. Alright, let's proceed to property number 2. It says that in a parallelogram, any two opposite angles are congruent. Now, this at this point, we will be talking about the angles. Okay? So, for the parallelogram FAST, we have here that angle F is congruent to angle S since they are the opposite angles. Same thing when we have angle A which is 70 degrees, and angle T is also 70 degrees. So in that way, angle F is congruent to angle S, and angle A is congruent to angle T. Now let's move on to property number 3. It says here that in a parallelogram, any two consecutive angles are supplementary. Now when you talk about consecutive angles, these are angles are said to be adjacent. And for the supplementary angles, these angles of uh, two angles which measure is equal to 180 degrees. Just like in our illustration here. Suppose we have here angle S. Angle S and angle H are so uh, consecutive angles. Same thing when you have angle S and angle U. Where angle S... Measure of angle S plus the measure of angle U is equal to 180 degrees. And angle U, measure of angle U plus the measure of angle C is equal to 180 degrees. And at the same time, measure of angle C plus measure of angle H is equal to 180 degrees. And lastly, we have measure of angle H plus the measure of angle S is equal to 180 degrees as well. Okay, property number four. The diagonals of a parallelogram bisect each other. So from the word itself, bisect, that means it is being divided into two equal parts. So right here, we have here uh, diagonal SL and diagonal AT. They bisect each other and at point O. Okay, so this one here. So therefore, that segment SO and segment LO are congruent segments okay and segment ao this one here is congruent to segment to all right let's move on to property number five the diagonal of a parallelogram forms two congruent triangles all right so we have here the diagonal of a parallelogram l a n d is diagonal l n so there are two triangles that is being formed right here and the triangle also here okay so we have here triangle l e n and we have triangle n d l so if we're going to extend that one further that side l a and <clears throat> we also have here side n d you have formed such a transversal line okay line l n so remember the alternate interior angles formed by the transversal line. Let's say for example this angle here is congruent to that one, alternate. And that angle here also will gonna be congruent to that one. So remember the correspondence. Alright, so we have here triangle LAN and triangle NDL. Okay, so we have formed triangle LEN is congruent to triangle and DL. So just remember that one that angle L corresponds to angle N. So therefore you would have angle L is congruent to angle N. As well as when you have angle A and angle D, their corresponding uh, corresponding angles. So you have angle A is congruent to angle D. And lastly we have angle N correspond to angle 
L. So you have angle N is congruent to angle L. Okay, let's now move on to examples. Okay, find the measure of angle V in our parallelogram VEST or VEST. So right here, we have the given that the measure of angle V is 12x plus 4. Okay, while measure of angle S is 13x minus 6. So these two angles here, we are these are opposite, opposite angles. So what par, uh, property we can apply here? So that would be property number two. To solve, we have angle V is congruent to angle S. Then substitute, you have 12x plus 4 is equal to 13x minus 6. And we're after the value of our x, so we have to transfer 12x on the other side. That would be 13 minus 12. And we have negative 6 will be transferred also on the other side. That's why it becomes 4 plus 6. So 13x minus 12x, that would give you x is equal to 10. Since we have 4 plus 6, so that would be equal to 10. Now the value of our x here is equal to 10. So what shall we do? Okay, so we may now use that value of our x which is 10 to find the measure of angle V. To find that one, you have 12x plus 4. Substitute 12 times 10 plus 4. That will give you 120 plus 4, a total of 124 degrees. And that would be the measure of angle V. So right here, so that would be 124 degrees. So if you will be looking also for the measure of angle S, you just simply have to substitute the value of our x here. So 13 times 10 minus 6, still you will get the same value, which is 124. Is that clear? Okay, let's move on to example number 2. For example number 2, find the measure of side EA. Where is side EA in this one? Okay, here is our side AE. Uh, EA rather and side TAS TS rather not TA is equal to 14 so if you have to take a look with it they are opposite sides so what do you think is the property we can apply here and that is property number one so these two sides here are congruent so without any solving therefore you would have simply that side EA is equal to 14 but we have to find the value of our X so to solve for x, you would have side EA is equal to or congruent to segment TS. So substitute 3x minus 1 is equal to 14. So transfer negative 1 on the other side, that becomes 14 plus 1. So that would be 15. So 3x is equal to 15. Dividing both sides by 3, therefore we've got the value of x which is 5. Understood? Alright, so since we do already have the value of x, which is 5, we will now substitute for that segment EA or side EA. Alright, so 3x minus 1, substitute the value of x, which is 5, so 3 times 5 minus 1, that is 15 minus 1. So therefore, that will give you same value or same length of segment TS, that is EA is equal to 14. Is that clear? Okay, so let's move on to example number three. Okay, diagonals AC and BD. Where is diagonal AC? Okay, we have here AC and BD. They met at point E. So here is our point E, that intersection there. It says that DA, where's the A? This one. Okay, it measures uh, 8 cm and segment BA is X and AC, okay, the diagonal that we mentioned a while back, that is equivalent of 13 cm. Now, the question here, how long is segment BD? So, the totality of this diagonal, how long is that? Okay, and of course, we are also asked how long is segment CE? Okay, so that is represented by Y. So to solve that one, you would have here BD. Okay, that diagonal there, the totality of that diagonal is equal to the length of DE 
DE rather and the length of DE knowing that these two are congruent it says that one from our property number four so if segment DE this one is 8 centimeter and that is X that means X is also equal to 8 centimeters so that's why 8 plus 8 you would have it there as 16 centimeter that would be the length of segment BD understood so that is the length of our diagonal how long about uh, how about this uh, segment CE that's the second diagonal knowing that the length of the second diagonal is 13 and we are just only after of this length here well, of course, we'll just simply divide it by 2. How? So that is segment AC as the total 13 centimeter divided 1 by 2 since these two are congruent. They bisect each other, right? So divide both sides. Uh, I mean divide by 2, 13. That would give us 6.5 centimeter. And that's side uh, 6.5 centimeter. That is the segment C, E, or the value of our Y. Understood? Okay. So let's now move on to number four. So for example, number four in the figure below. Okay, we have E, H, O, R. It says that the measure of angle O, H, E. O, H, E. So that is three times the measure of angle HER. We are asked to find measure of angle OHE and the measure of angle HER. So going back to the angle OHE. So OHE. So meaning this angle here is just three times. Okay? Three times the measure of angle HER. Where is HER? H E R. So the angle here. Okay, let us now solve. We will represent that H E R as our X. So it says here three times the measure of angle H E R is our angle O H E. So therefore, let's have three X to solve. You would have uh, measure of angle E plus the measure of angle H is equal to one hundred. 80 degrees to substitute that would be x plus 3x is equal to 180 so what is x plus 3x that will give you 4x is equal to 180 and we are after the value of our x so what shall we do we have to divide both sides by 4 that's the numerical coefficient of x so as we divide you would have x is equal to 45 degrees okay so meaning to say that the measure of angle o h uh, i mean h e r here is equal to 45 degrees so to solve for uh we have it there already h e r is equal to 45 degrees and to solve for the measure of angle o h e that is 3x that is what we were present a while back so 3 times 45 which is the value of our x Therefore, 3 times 45 is 135. So, meaning to say that the measure of this angle formed here is equal to 135 degrees. You've got it? Okay, that's very good. So, I hope that from this video, you were able to learn uh, the properties of a parallelogram. Once again, thank you for listening and God bless everyone.